uh, what we are going to do today. Um, it's uh, the second uh, workshop. Uh, last time there was uh, just an idea, well, why not to do something practically, I mean, so that people can really do and, and perform management and, I mean, really to, to justify whatever technology they have and uh, learn a little bit about the different uh, possibilities to measure. Uh, last time it was uh, pretty much successful. After this, we have a lot of discussion, a lot of experiments, and we propose this time again. And uh, thank you very much for coming. Um, what is the plan today? Uh, we have two short presentations uh, that are listed in, um, in the agenda. Uh, this is about, let's say, uh, 20 minutes. Uh, please, please, please be, uh, I mean, sure, as in time. That's, that's uh, Im important. Okay. Then uh, we have two uh, pre prepared cases. Um, one case is uh, one case is um, the, um, the crystal technology, uh, Arca crystals. Uh, they will a little bit explain what they are doing and how they are measuring, and they will uh, perform live uh, measurements. Will control. I mean, they, they will experience the whole technology. Um, we, uh, uh, at least here in this setup, um, uh, we have one uh, uh, non-imprinted uh, fluid. So we will uh, make a measurement as a first of all with this fluid, and then we have second case of. Uh, of uh, imprinted fluids. We just received it yesterday. I mean, we performed yesterday measurement and uh, I will repeat it today. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, well, and then uh, more or less, uh, we will do this uh, by the way of excitation spectroscopy. That was basically today my question. Um, uh, it's whether, let's say, um, correlation between electrochemistry and optical phenomena, and we will basically demonstrate there's a lot of correlation, and uh, I hope, I mean, next year we will explore this more in details. Well, this is pre-prepared. What is open-ended? Open-ended, uh, we have here uh, two fighter sensors. They're beautiful plants, uh, Dratsana. They are electrically uh, pretty much active. Um, so, and, uh, you know, they, they, they can speak, and they, uh, you see, that's uh, just plant, uh, we measuring electrophysiology of plants or biopotential and tissue conductivity. And uh, they, they, I mean, they have a kind of uh, voice engine, they can speak. So, but for instance, don't touch me, go away, you have cold hand and, and so on and so on. There's an uh, interactive plant. Um, uh, yes, and there's a lot of fun with this, uh, with this kind of technology. And um, what we do, uh, basically, we've we, uh, we done it before, and we will repeat this um, as we here. And this open-ended. I mean, it's really open-ended. We don't know what, what will happen. Um, that our uh, colleagues in China, they will perform a kind of non-local impact on the biological <coughs> organism, in this case, on these uh, two plants. Okay, and we are measuring this, continuously measuring this. And, uh, okay, we will happen what, uh, we will see what will happen, yes, after, after a while. Uh, normally, I mean, uh, when we perform this kind in Stuttgart, we receive a kind of spike in dynamics. But now, I mean, it's less, let's say, this less uh, kind of uh, strong experiment, this more, um, let's say, entertainment demonstration. Uh, we will see, okay, how they will react, because many people, uh, plants are excited, and you will see. Well, this is the one thing. Uh, second thing, uh, uh, here uh, we perform, basically, I'm, uh, this experiment is, is inspired by Jeremy. He done this experiment in U.S. in desert, Desert, yeah, yeah. Uh, they perform, um, I mean, we, 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 we train it with small groups of people, of course, this, this kind. But they perform with 400 people, yeah, in the room. That's, 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 that's absolutely amazing. And so Jeremy, uh, uh, with a spectrometer, he asked a uh, publicum just to concentrate their attention on one of the channel. And, uh, okay, another channel is closed. We will uh, cover this by something. Okay, and we uh, will plot dynamic and... Uh, um, Monitors, so you see a kind of feedback, and this way we create a kind of consciousness feedback. So you you you, you try to put attention on this. You see what is happening, but okay, it's a lot of people. It's open ended. I mean, we, we don't know what will happen. Okay, we will see. And the point you you can, and uh, we need to close this. <laughs> <laughs> the 
because the whole electrochemistry sensitive to temperature, like I said, it's uh, not a strong experiment as a demonstration. So, uh, so for <coughs> sorry when it uh, will not, uh, not uh, happen or whatever, it's, uh, it's open-ended. So well, and uh, okay, and then uh, we have these devices, so a few devices we give uh, two, three, uh, let's say, devices in the auditoria, and you can test with your own technology. So we will uh, provide support, and there is a plan for today. Any questions, anything, what? I think he, he already started to do this. Uh, device, no, de device, this device. Um, I think we will write anyway paper on this. It's a kind of electromagnetic device. It's, uh, to some extent. <laughs> okay, I'm ready with talking. Then um, uh, please, uh, pr two, two presentation first, yeah? Yeah, please. Mathematical models of water, please. And the presentation is on the computer. Mm. Mm, I say two. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, first, welcome in Bulgaria, my country. I was in USA 2012 with two presentations. First was Origin of Life in Sea Hot Mineral Water, a second for the human longevity. Uh, this presentation is practical, and I hope that uh, with common interest, we make big development in future in water. Uh, I am editor in chief and editor of 11 American, European, Russian journals. We report about the research of the structure of intermolecular water clusters with general formula, and they search on a cluster with this formula. This is with computer modeling, and see there are the uh, spectroscopy method, reliable uh, uh, computer method. The computer calculations make nanostructures, H2ON, where is N is from 3 to 50 water structures with hydrogen bonding, nature of hydrogen bonding, quantum chemical calculation of the clusters with general formula, 
where any six to 20 have shown the most stable structure are formed by the interaction of uh, different type of structures. This is with 9, 11, 13, 14, 17, 18, and 19 molecules. In my presentation, I will show different measurement with reliable methods of real nanostructures. The chemical structure of uh, water molecule and weak bond uh, caused by electrostatistic forces and donor acceptor interaction between hydrogen and oxygen atoms in uh, water molecules uh, connected with hydrogen bonds. This is a very interesting measurement uh, with results from 3 to 50 molecules, Kate Sakely, 2011. Nature of hydrogen bonding. Richard Sagley, University of California, USA, calculated the possible number of hydrogen bonds and the stability of water cluster depending on the number of water molecules. This is measurement with highest level uh, spectroscopy. Nature of hydrogen bonding. The hydrogen bond is from interaction between electron deficiency and hydrogen atom, you know that. And the result of electron and the hydrogen atom due to relatively weak bond with the proton shift and electro negative oxygen atom. This is different type of structure of uh, hydrogen bonding. Structure of models of water molecules. The microcrystalline mo model of Bernal et Power suggests that there are groups of orientated molecules in liquid microcrystals containing several dozens or hundreds of molecules. Other smaller model, this is kinetic theory of uh, Frankel. And in this model, it's interesting that the authors speak about satellite life of the water molecules and they take equilibrium orientation for the orientation time with this physical formula. When uh, this is uh, time, around 10 minus 12, 10 minus 13 seconds. Okay. Uh, studies with X-ray scattering and liquids consist of polyatomic molecules revealed on not only the same regular arrangement of water molecule, but of different molecules. The orientation becomes even more expressed in smaller molecules because of the hydrogen bonding effect. In 1990, Domrachev and Slivanovsky formulate a model based on the extent of mechanical chemical reaction of ionization and dissociation of water in a cold solution. Water was thrown out dynamically unstable polymer composed of H2N block with partly covalent 10% hydrogen bonds. This is another formula of hydrogen bonding. Here is the author of NES method, Professor Anton Antonov. Another interesting physical phenomenon of water was discovered by Anton Antonov in 1983. It was established experimentally that evaporation of water droplet, the contact angle decreasing discreetly to zero whereas the diameter of the droplet change by measuring this angle within a regular time interval, a function the pet A theta can be determined, which is this, uh, this night of the spectrum of water state. Method NES is based of mathematical model of uh, my, with my co-author Oleg Mosin for 
particular purposes by registration of spectrum of water state, it is possible to obtain information about the average energy of hydrogen bonds in aqueous sample. By measurement this angle and this function, uh, we make the spectrum of the water state. For the pa practical purposes, by registration the stable of water, it's possible to obtain information about the average energy of hydrogen bonds in the aqueous sample. This is the method of Professor Antonov. The method of Professor Antonov is connected with model of look with different positions of hydrogen bonds among water molecules. We make uh, uh, energy distribution function Fa. Uh, this function is measured in electron volt minus one. So this is the basic formula of the model of Professor Antonov. Another measurement is connected with uh, measurement of uh, of sample and on the base of differential non-equilibrium spectrum, uh, this is control sample. Differential non-equilibrium energy spectrum is measure of changes of structure of water as a result of external influences. The accumulative effect of all other factors is the same for the control sample of water and for the water sample which is under influence of this impact. This is the non-equilibrium spectrum of deionized water. The range is from uh, minus 0.09 to minus 0.14 electron volts. And moment. And this is uh, the range of micrometers, also wavelength. This is example with solution of Moringa for mathematical model with application for human health. The research with Ness method of water drops is received with 1% solutions Moringa and deionized water as control sample. The mathematical models of 1% solutions of uh, Moringa give valuable information for possible numbers of hydrogen bonds as percent of water molecules with different values of uh, distribution of energies. These distributions are basically connected with restructuring of water molecules having the same energy. This is the model. And this is the distribution of the percent of uh, possible numbers of water molecule according energies in electron volts. This is the example with picture. For minus zero, 11 electron volts, we have effect on the nervous system. Minus 12, 12, we have anti-inflammatory effects. A minus 0 0.1387, we have effects on the tumor cells. And common effects with the method give information about the biophysical, biochemical and biological effect in the human body. Note, energy minus 0, 11, 11, 12, is the vocal extremum for relaxing effect on the nervous system. Minus 12-12 uh, is the vocal extremum for anti-inflammatory effect. Minus 13-87 is the local extremum for inhibition of development of tumor cell of molecular level. The spectrum is beginning from minus 0 0.1112 and this shows effect of detoxification. The distribution percent distribution of the value of energy of hydrogen bond and total value of water molecule of different uh, samples of water, deionized water. After that is mountain spring water, 
gletscher water, water anulit, and water catulit. And this visible difference between different waters with different effects which are uh, on the human body also. Proof for water clusters. I show in the modern science different methods and with this method they are proof uh, for water clusters with size no more than three nanometers. Cluster structures in water calculated theoretically on the computer were confirmed by HNMR method, infrared method, Ramson, Compton, scattering, this spectroscopy, X-ray diffraction, information obtaining in using modern detection method corresponds to femtosecond time dynamics of intermolecular interaction in molecular scale. Now I show different methods for registration uh, of different clusters. Okay, first method, type of spectroscopy. X-ray neutron diffraction method and another method also. I move quickly for the method and this research is publishing in different scientific journals and from uh, 2013 this is in uh, American Journal of Mathematical Theory in, uh, and Modeling. And my report is of the memory of my colleague, Oleg Mosin, who died only 49 years old. Thank you for the attention. Okay, okay, many thanks for your presentation. We have time for one short question, one short answers. Uh, what about the ion in the water? And uh, is it easy to calculate involving the ion? To, uh, and if the ion concentration is high, and uh, how does it affect your calculation? Yes, this is not so easy. Because uh, before 10 years, to have uh, water clusters uh, was so exotical idea and this was opinion of different scientists in the world. I make uh, research with this method of the level to be understanding what are the effects after the influence on the water molecules in the human body from one side and from other side the bridge between biophysics and medicine give additional possibility for the project. And I hope that in future conference, we will speak much more for longevity. We run process to make water again cancer. We have some research and also uh, to make new proof about the sport. This depends with uh, Hydrogen uh, ion depends with different uh, 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 different effects in water. Short question, short answer. Thank you. Thank you for your conference. Sorry, I didn't uh, get what is Moriga water. How do you get it? Where it comes from? Thank you. The Moringa. Moringa. Ah, Moringa. Uh, I take this plant from Africa and with this plant uh, I make 1% dilution to make research. And this is possible with different food supplement plants. But before that I had long research, minimum 10 years, to understand what is the language of water. Similar is the research of uh, Bulgarian scientist Romana Senkova. This is 
thank, thank you very much. That was a uh, pleasure from our side, yes. <laughs> um, who, was the, who is the next speaker? Okay, then we jump to uh, team from uh, California. I'd like to invite uh, our chief technology officer, Scott Brown. He'll give a quick overview of our project. He's the one that brought the technology to the company and vetted it out, so go ahead, Scott. Hi, everyone. Uh, we have been studying uh, ARC, what we call ARC crystals, which are PGM, PQM uh, precision quartz crystals, and they're influenced by our electronic device which has a circularly polarized um, modulation and after they have been influenced by that exposure we ha originally we simply used plants to measure the effect of the crystals on water so or on the plants directly so we measured the the uh, the effect of the crystal by placing the crystals underneath plants, and the plants would grow better in one case, for example. And William did most of these experiments. Uh, one meter flat of wheatgrass, a crystal underneath it, and the wheatgrass grew like that, three-dimensionally, like a Poisson distribution across the flat of wheatgrass with the wheatgrass in the center uh, over three times taller than the periphery. And so we said, well, we have to examine this effect further. And we theorized then that, the, that water, in fact, was the medium since plants are mostly water. And then we discovered that water exposed to that crystal, which then fed the plants, caused the same effect and to the same degree. Can you add to that? Um, yeah, certainly. Uh, so we have uh, these precision geometry uh, courts, uh, which are uh, specially engineered uh, to have uh, resonant responses to particular electromagnetic frequency, uh, particularly uh, they're how they're the quartz is cut and its specific ratio relationships. So. Um, we treat these pre precision geometry quartz, PGQ, uh, with a multi-phasic modulated, uh, circularly modulated electromagnetic field. Counterclockwise. Uh, counterclockwise. <laughs> uh, after which time, um, the crystals, um, or the PGQ, uh, we refer to as PGQ-MEM, that is, uh, quartz that has been treated with our uh, uh, specially patterned electromagnetic field. Uh, quartz has uh, a electromechanical access that gives it the property of uh, a piezoelectric uh, phenomena. So when you pass uh, an electromagnetic field through it, uh, it will generate uh, phonon oscillations. Or conversely, if you apply uh, mechanical pressure, it will generate a current, which will generate an EM field. Uh, so we believe with our particular methodology of, you could say, activating these crystals with this specially polarized EM field, uh, they will then uh, have a particular resonance and a particular EM field associated with them, which will interact with water and have, uh, and possibly have effects on the water. And notice that these crystals are in the form of a tetrahedron. So that a tetrahedron is the most fundamental and simple solid form, uh, three-dimensional form 
and, and quartz and water are both uh, coordinated tetrahedrally, uh, intramolecularly, and at, at, at the molecular level as well. So there's some structural uh, resonance there. Right. The early basis of this theory comes from Nassim Harriman, and it is that the tetrahedral form, in fact, is represented throughout nature from the Planck on up to these molecules, which are tetrahedral, and then this is cut tetrahedrally, and these crystals are specifically cut so that the lattice of the crystal itself is precisely oriented to within a fraction of a degree to the lattice of the actual quartz crystal. Precision engineered quartz. Uh, so they're uh, hydrothermally synthesized, so they're grown in a lab from a seed, it takes about two years to grow one. Uh, ultra pure electronics grade quartz, optical grade quartz, uh, and then uh, we got them with this specific geometry. Um, and you know, and these the actual source of these crystals, if anyone is interested, are from NDK in Japan. They're precision grown for the optical and electronics industry. Uh, you can kind of see the, the uh, tetrahedral coordination of the uh, silicon tetraoxide, which is, this is uh, almost the exact same uh, intermolecular tetrahedral coordination that water And assumes. have you noticed here that this looks a little bit similar to the structures that presented about easy water? Uh, so this is uh, the device that we use to uh, stimulate the quartz crystals, uh, or, or even you could think of it as activating them uh, electronically. Uh, so this is a, a electromagnetic resonance generator. We refer to it as the harmonic flux resonator. Um, and it has uh, about 24 solenoids uh, on an upper hemisphere and another 24 on a lower hemisphere. We have a multi-phasic modulated uh, EM wave that is generated in a, and it generates like a, a, a circular uh, um, EM field, rotating EM field. Uh, they're actually inductive antennas, not really solenoids, by the way. There's no movement within those elements, actually. And we put the uh, PGQ around the outside of uh, the uh, harmonic flux resonator uh, so that they are exposed to the field. Um, now, due to the properties uh, that we believe have been engineered into these crystals, we think that they should have an effect on water. Uh, so one of the ways that we tested this was we give water treated with the PGQ, the PGQ MEM, uh, to test plants. Uh, so here you can see um, this is 16 crystals, this is 8 PGQ MEM, 1, and the control. Uh, we place them into these pipes where they're secured. Uh, the water passes over them one time, and then they're distributed to our plant test groups. Uh, and we see uh, fairly dramatic differences between the test groups. Um, particularly going from untreated water to water that has been exposed to one PGQ mem, eight, 16, and quantification of that uh, shows that our test group with the most exposure to the PGQ mem experienced the highest average growth rate. Uh, so this is the average stock length in millimeters, and this is the time and days uh, so as the plants are germinating, we're taking uh, measurements of the stock length, and it's about 30-point measurements uh, per group, uh, and then we average that. And our control has the lowest average growth rate, and you can see almost like a dose-dependent response uh, with increasing exposure of the water to the PGQ. We have uh, increased uh, response of the test organism. Uh, so, of course, if it has a, a faster growth rate, uh, the plants are larger. Uh, and so we see uh, a significantly larger 
uh, size of the plants uh, with our treated group. Uh, and in fact, uh, the 16 PGQ test group uh, has about a 254% uh, greater average stock length over the control. Uh, and then there is a uh, decreasing effect with uh, smaller numbers of uh, PGQ that the water has been exposed to. Uh, so this was a strong indication that the PGQ mem is having an effect on the water and because th the plants are only receiving water uh, that has been exposed to the PGQ mem. So if they're having a 250% increase in the average stock length, it must be something that has happened to the water that we've given them. Uh, so our next step is to, was to test uh, the properties of water, see if we could detect what might be changing in the treated uh, samples. And one of the ways that we uh, have been testing that is via uh, probing the electrochemical properties of water with uh, impedance spectroscopy, which uh, Jeremy is setting up here now, and he's going to give a demonstration on that. When we uh, test the samples that have been treated with the activated PGQ, the PGQ MEM, we find that they have an average lower impedance value as compared to our untreated control samples. So uh, this is impedance in ohms. Uh, so Ultra pure water, which is what we're using, uh, has about is at about 18 mega ohms, uh, and you can see our control sample uh, is at about 23 mega ohms. Our treated sample is at about 12,000 at 400 mega ohms. hertz. Uh, at, at 400 hertz, so uh, you know, uh, as you s sweep across the the uh, frequency spectrum. Uh, you do have a, a slight decrease in both groups of the impedance. Uh, most of the action is uh, actually in this lower frequency range. Uh, it kind of starts to uh, uh, level off uh, above uh, four to 5,000 uh, hertz. So uh, we believe that Part of the effect is occurring because of the electromagnetic treatment of the PGQ. So uh, further testing we did was to look at what uh, does the impedance value, the impedance response of the water look like with a PGQ that has not been treated with the electromagnetic modulation. Uh, so that's just a PGQ uh, unactivated, if you will. And what we find is that uh, even uh, without the treatment, there is a lower impedance value, average impedance value, uh, as compared to the control. And so so um, these averages are uh, 54 measurements done over three days. Uh, that's uh, how these um, uh, values uh, are, are, the averages are, are generated. Now, when we compare the PGQ, the PGQ mem, and the control, uh, we find that our PGQ mem, the PGQ that's been treated electromagnetically, uh, has the lowest imp uh, average impedance value. Uh, the PGQ that has not been treated has a higher impedance value, but it's still lower than the control. Uh, and th this is, uh, we believe, partly because uh, the effects of the PGQ have to do with their uh, precision geometry, the exact ratio relationships at which they're cut. And also the nature of quartz itself and being the piezoelectric. Itself. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and its structure aligning with the structure of water, the tetrahedral structure of quartz. And um, one of the examples I like to give on, on why quartz would be, be interactive or have an effect on water. Uh, if you think about the earth, which is one of the most biohospitable places we know of, 
uh, the surface is 70% water, and the crust is 90% silicate minerals or quartz. Uh, and so maybe it's coincidence that you get a lot of water together over uh, quartz or silicate minerals and you get a thriving environment uh, for life. Uh, it might be coincidental. I, I find it very uh, suggestive though. So I'm going to be conducting the, uh, the electrochemical impedance spectroscopy portion of this presentation. And uh, I'm just going to kind of run us through um, two measurements. Um, it's going to represent uh, two measurements of the 54 that we took that built the statistical value um, in our data, data analysis process. Um, we have two uh, Faraday shielding um, containers here. Um, on this one side, or both of them have distilled water in it. And on this one side, we have the PGQ mem crystal. And on this other side, we have just the control water. So we're basically going to uh, take a measurement of each, and we're going to show the differential. And uh, I'll let uh, William take it from there. Actually, maybe Scott can talk a little bit about the whole shielding process, because we, um, we took about three or four months as we built you know, our methods and protocols, and Scott was kind of over our shoulder the whole time, really pushing for controls and really tightening up our protocols. So I think Scott could speak a lot about that. Well, the, um, these vessels were, we found early on that when we were influencing water with the crystals, that before we had the EIS machine, we were using pH and other mechanisms we were, we were me measuring surface tension, pH, and conductivity in a simpler machine than the EIS machine that we now have. And we found that the influence was stronger and more reliable when done in a shielded cage, or a Faraday cage, if you will. And uh, we used a different one than, than the ones we've recently constructed, simply out of copper pipes and lids. And so the shielding from other EMF is probably to do with that uh, more sensitive effect. So we, and one of the other uh, speakers earlier this week uh, described uh, measuring electrochemical impedance uh, with water and that it had to be done in a shielded cage as well to get the, the maximum differentiation of effect between one influence and another. So I think that we've, we both sort of corroborate that experience. So we created these shielded cages. Specifically, these are actually made to, excuse me, fit the machine itself. So we have a, a place for the, where the wire exits and then we have the grounding um, element. So. I mean, I could say a lot more, but I think that's sufficient. So w what Jeremy has done is uh, he's taken an aliquot of our uh, ultra-pure water sample uh, that's been in the EM shielded container with the PGQ MEM, and he's put it into the uh, cuvette for the instrumentation and uh, he can now run a uh, analysis of it. Uh, so here, yeah, here you can see the screen. It's in this. The water was exposed chamber. to it in this chamber. Now just the water aliquots have been two of them, one with the control and one with the uh, tested water, or the exposed water, I should say are in these two, cha there are two channels on the EIS machine. So the water sits over the PGQ on top of it, it within the uh, container? No, it's in a copper container. And the, well, the glass, con the water's in, a, in a, a glass container. If you look in here, you can see where the crystal is. Whoops, sorry. Just That's a, correct. Just in proximity 
the plant test we did, though, the water is passed uh, directly over the, the uh, PGQ. So there is uh, direct contact. Uh, so we ran tests in both ways, um, just in proximity and with direct contact. Right, and but we've done also done plant tests where the crystal simply set underneath the plant itself and the plant growth responded. 24 hours. Um, that, that's the standard that we use uh, for, for all of our testing. Um, Except for the recent tests where we simply run the water each time the plant is watered for really under one second is exposed as it runs past in the, in the pipes. And uh, William showed the, the, the photos of that a little bit earlier. Where the, remember where the crystals are lined up on a little substrate within the tube. And so uh, as the EIS device is, is taking the reading, uh, you can see that the greatest amount of activity is down here at the lower end of the frequency spectrum. Uh, so uh, as it's sweeping across to higher frequencies and measuring uh, the impedance response of the water, uh, it starts to level off at uh, higher frequencies. So this is uh, where we believe uh, the water has the, the highest response uh, is in the uh, 450 to uh, uh, 2000 uh, hertz range. Uh, and this is running uh, from 450 hertz to 10,000 uh, hertz at about um, from the millivolt uh, to the one volt uh, range. Well, exactly, uh, <laughs> exactly would be um, indistinguishable, but uh, it, it, so not, not exactly, but um, as I had mentioned, uh, when we're generating these curves here, uh, these are averages of 54 measurements. Uh, so uh, this is repeated uh, 27 times over three days uh, and each time two measurements are taken. Uh, so for a, fit, a total of 54 measurements. So um, although it's not always the exact response, the average response looks like this. And, uh, and, and in each measurement there is clear differentiation. Always differentiation. Yes, as measured by this, this device. <laughs> Well, I can real quick, it, it, you can see at 400 hertz, uh, our PGQ MEM is at about 5,000 uh, mega ohms. Uh, 5,000 kilo ohms. Uh, 5,000 uh, kilo ohms. Uh, and our control is at about uh, 23,000 kilo ohms. Uh, so, you know, that's uh, 18,000 kilo ohm uh, difference between, at, at 450 hertz. Well, no, no, Jer Jeremy, he's asking about uh, th this one. Over the one here. over here. Yeah. So, so th this is a real-time PGQ mem plot that Jeremy's taking right now. Uh, this upper curve here is the control. So this is untreated water. The upper curve is the control. Uh, that's, it, that's water, uh, the same kind of ultra-pure water placed in the EM shielding container uh, but the only difference is that there's no PGQ or PGQ mem uh, in the, the container with it. Now, when you put a PGQ in, uh, y you see a decrease in the average impedance. So from about 20,000 kilo ohms, about 12,000 uh, kilo ohms, so almost a, a 10,000 kilo ohm difference in the impedance value. Uh, so, and then this lower curve, this is the PGQ that has been treated with the uh, multiphasic circularly polarized EM field generated by the uh, EM resonance generator. 
the bottom curve. So this bottom curve uh, is the uh, PGQ uh, that has been treated with the EM resonance generator. So it's been placed uh, in proximity uh, to this device while the EM field is being generated. Uh, it, it's, it's in there for about 24, it's in there for 24 hours with the device uh, and then it's taken out, it's now PGQ MEM, PGQ that has been electromagnetically uh, modulated. Now the PGQ is one of these guys that have not received the, the electromagnetic treatment. Uh, so this has been placed in with the EM resonance generator. Uh, so uh, the, the, the main feature is the uh, geometry. Oh, yeah. The, yeah, the geometry is the same between the PGQ and PGQM. And, uh, and, and they have the same geometry, the same material. It's only the exposure to the EM generator that is different between them. And so J Jeremy has taken a s second measurement of the PGQ MEM treated water sample. Uh, and you can see the, the curves are pretty close together, uh, especially in the uh, lower frequency range where there's the greatest response. So uh, this is one, we, we would average these two curves together and then do this 27 more times to get these curves over here. And another note, uh, these, have only been these have only been charging for about six hours. Uh, normally we charge for 24 hours. So um, this is, this is not exactly how we do it in the lab, but this is kind of a, a live demonstration to kind of give you guys an idea, our methods and protocols. Um, so yeah, I mean, it pretty much uh, is that. Uh, and I, I might add though that w the time of exposure, it seems that it, it doesn't need to be nearly as high as what we've been doing. We assumed it needed to be fairly high, but in our recent watering experiments with the automated watering, system where the water simply runs rapidly past a set of crystals or no crystal, it still creates a very large difference uh, between uh, PGQ mem exposed water and not. And uh, so uh, the, the exposure that we first tried when we first uh, started using the EIS when Jeremy brought his own before we bought ours for the lab to us, w we only exposed the water for one hour and we noticed a, a considerable difference. In the same way, we didn't do it in a Faraday cage at that point, but we did only expose the water for one hour because we had a very limited time and it showed a, co a, a clear difference at that point. Uh, yes, uh, I can probably speak to that best because I, I did the uh, specification and, and managed the whole process of being uh, manufactured. These crystals are extremely precise. They're cut in by machine to, they're actually, they're, they're sawed with a diamond saw and then they're, they're precision ground to a precise shape and size and, and angles are are precise to within a fraction of a degree. The, the height is uh, exactly 16.82 millimeters in height on all, no matter how you turn it because it's a regular tetrahedron that has the apices uh, are truncated and the edges chamfered. And, and so they're do all done in precisely the same way. And in order to, to for them to fit in this protective titanium shell, which is also precisely done using metal injection molded titanium, they would not fit unless they were that precise. And also, there, it's necessary for them, 
in our theory anyway, for the, them to be this precise and with these dimensions in order for them to resonate properly with the field. Well, there was uh, there was chlorophyll density measured on that as well, wasn't there, William? Yes. We we did uh, spectrophotometric analysis uh, or quantification of it as well, so uh, that gives an indication of the uh, growth density, uh, which you can also get an indication of the uh, germination rate uh, compared to the control, uh, and as well, uh, it gives a indirect measurement of the phytonutrient content, um, and. Uh, our spe uh, spectrophotometric analysis of the, the wheatgrass, uh, we saw uh, differences as great as 7,000% uh, uh, difference in the relative spectral intensity uh, between the uh, PGQ-MEM treated uh, plant test group and the control. And you can actually see it visually if we had pictures here to, to show you because um, uh, it's a full lawn, if you will, of wheatgrass, very dark green, uh, and the control sample uh, doesn't have the same kind of uh, coloration or density. And uh, when we concluded the quantification, we took the wheatgrass and juiced it. Uh, none of us like to drink wheatgrass, but uh, we did notice that the PGQ mem treated wheatgrass group tasted pretty good uh, compared to the control. Yeah, thus giving an indirect uh, subjective analysis of the nutrient content. <laughs> yes. Well, these experiments have been going on for a number of years, starting in Hawaii. The, uh, the wheatgrass experiments were done in Hawaii, where the temperature and humidity are quite different than the recent experiments that we've been doing in California. So there's been a huge range. However, we have not attempted to precisely control the temperature. We're actually about to do that to some extent in our California laboratory. We, we have the uh, capability of controlling the temperature more precisely, but we do, in fact, uh, now measure the temperature uh, with each uh, subsequent uh, test. But uh, one thing is true, the control and the test units are, in fact, at the same temperature. So temperature is, is sort of canceled out in a sense. Why did you choose a um, tetraeder and not another uh, platonic body? And uh, second, uh, what outcome would you expect from this experiment? Yeah, those are very good questions. <laughs> the tetrahedron actually is, I think William can help speak to this as well, but it comes from a, a Nassim Harriman's uh, theory of geometry um, that it expresses itself from the very fundamental nature of the universe, and that the tetrahedral solid is the most fundamental and, and is expressed in many parts of nature and therefore resonates with water and with silicon dioxide, which is, again, you know, a fundamental part of the Earth's structure. And so that's why the tetrahedron was chosen. Uh, we could go into probably a lot more detail than that. Now, Sim talks about it for probably an, an hour, hour and a half nonstop. I can't quite talk that long about it, but uh, it certainly is, I think I've expressed the, the basic reason. And then your second question was, how does this affect health in a human being? Well, we're not formally studying that. However, William can speak to that better than I can. He's created a survey of some of the people that actually use these crystals and they have responded with 
a number of results. Uh, yeah, um, we've done a, a survey of uh, with 50 volunteers. Uh, when we first started distributing these uh, as a commercially available product, um, we just marketed them as uh, something cool that you can wear. We didn't make any claims uh, because we didn't have any kind of studies to make any claims or anything like that. Uh, however, uh, we did ask uh, the 50 uh, volunteers that they uh, fill out a uh, 10 question uh, survey uh, when they first received the crystal before they started wearing it uh, and again six months after they had been wearing it um, continuously or, or regularly at least um, and uh, out of those 50 uh, responses uh, we saw uh, averages like 30 uh, percent uh, better response rate and feelings of um, uh, not being as fatigued during the day. Uh, so, you know, several markers of health and vitality. Um, uh, how easy is it for you to concentrate during the day? Um, uh, how quickly do you recover after vigorous exercise, et cetera? And then all of those uh, parameters we uh, from the uh, questionnaire, we, we uh, had an average uh, uh, better response rate in those who had been using the uh, PGQ. Uh, however, um, we don't make any claims from that. It's just, um, uh, it, it is indicative that it has a beneficial effect uh, to the uh, uh, person. Yeah, before, before my question, uh, just uh, going back to the platonic solid, that this is, uh, this right one is the, the, the only platonic solid that is uh, self-reciprocal. So that's uh, the unique property that uh, makes it, it, it special. And from the, this is from the geometric point of view. From the, the historical and uh, atavic point of view is that uh, that's the preferred nature for water because it, it means fire. So water for fire. You know, that's, uh, that's uh, the nature. Uh, okay, so uh, th that's my question. So for for PGQM, EM, uh, uh, how how long will last uh, the, the the modulation, the effect? That's a very good question. Um, we have uh, some older um, units that uh, are from 2011 time frame when the first things were developed by Nassim. One minute and. Uh, and some of those seem to still have their properties. Uh, and of course, we haven't tried to totally quantify whether or not that has to do with just the tetrahedral shape of the crystal or whether the charge or the, you know, the activation with the electronic device is still with it. So <coughs> we believe that it lasts for many years. It hasn't been adequately tested from my perspective, but I think it does last for quite a while. It's, it's not like the memory of water, which is gone in a very short time, as many of the people who spoke have described. It, it certainly lasts longer, and one would think that it would since it's a hard crystal as opposed to a liquid crystal in the case of water. So I just wanted to say thanks to Serge for having us and to Evgeny Germanoff and to Professor Pollock and all of the wonderful researchers and scientists. Uh, do we have time for one more question, Serge, or? Okay. Who was first? How about ladies, ladies first? Um, uh, my question about um, the measuring device. I would like uh, to know how you send the, the what you send in, in, in it, what kind of uh, waves and uh, which uh, it's a white, uh, white noise or how, and how you, you take it back, you know, the measurement device. I don't know if I quite understand, but um, we I mean, you, mm -hmm. you, 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 the waves that you, you, know, yeah. you measured, so you should send something in the water and measure it afterwards. 
You, you, you measure oh, so yeah. resonance of something? Yeah, so basically we're measuring from 400 hertz to uh, 10,000 hertz. Yes. Yeah, and we're probing at about one volt. Yes. And it's alternating current, and it's uh, electrochemical. But uh, you, you have um, a, we, there a electro program which uh, sends uh, the different frequencies. Yes. The uh, Serge's machine is the one that we're using, and it has two electrodes that go right within the water. And so they put uh, a stimulus frequency into the water, and we measure the conductivity between them. Uh, that's conductivity that you're measuring. Right. Oh, so that's my question. Thank and, you very much. And um, the, you know, the, the inverse okay. of conductivity is resistivity, right? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Or impedance. So you're measuring resistivity. Okay, thank you very much. Two bottles, yes. I, I think Serge can answer that a lot better than I can. Uh, two bottles. Um, wow. Because we are measuring, uh, let's say, very uh, subtle phenomena. And um, yes, it's a, the difference, you can think difference between two channels is something like 0 0.1 micro Siemens, 0, 0 0.1, that's a hundred of nano Siemens. So, and therefore, uh, we measuring something what is known with something that is unknown. So in this case, we uh, the control fluid is uh, we sell it. It's a not handled fluid, and the experimental fluid is a handled fluid. And we compare control to control. The first case, yeah. Then we know that it should be around zero or some let's say some some bias. Well, then we measure when measuring control to experiment, we we receive a kind of shift, and uh, basically this this uh, we, we we call it double differential approach. The difference between the first differential and the difference between second measured differential give you more or less idea what is happening with your water. It's a, a original point, and then basically much more what device can do, and uh, you can start. At least this is point where you can say, okay, my technology working or not working. Uh, what is the intensity? How can we improve it? You know this argumentation. Yeah. Is there any other questions? Okay, one last question. Thank you. Three speakers, much more question. One speaker, two question. Very simple. I came from a water fierce research for uh, for Shungit. This is nano mineral from Russian Federation, and the way of the marketing success also of this mineral is connected with a lot of different studies in the world. My question is. Uh, is it possible to show the table with chemical composition of your crystal? And much more, I am interested about the uh, water molecules from one side. And also, do you have the scientific publications to read much more for the effects? Well, the composition of the crystal is absolutely very pure SiO2 crystal. So it's 99 point nine nine percent pure there are no impurities in it the scientific paper uh, publication of any of this is uh, William has been responsible for most of that so why don't you speak to that William um, I apologize so I, I, what was your question about the scientific publication where to find more oh okay so uh, we're actually in the process of publishing this latest data so it will be uh, uh, the, these uh, most recent studies that, that I've presented here. Uh, they'll be available uh, via our uh, website. Uh, so, for instance, you can go to uh, touristech.com, uh, and we provide all of our research, our publications uh, there. Uh, so uh, th these would. We also have a uh, kind of more academic uh, subsidiary of the company, which is called the Resonance Science Foundation. Uh, there's a website there which will probably have uh, the reports uh, once they're published as well. Right, and that website is resonance.is, R-E-S-O-N-A-N-C-E dot I-S. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
least uh, from my point of view, I want to comment. Here uh, we saw, let's say, a stellar gram in the frequency area. So we scan or our colleagues scan in the frequency area. But uh, basically, uh, we, we can do not only the frequency area, we can do in time area. And what I'm do, uh, going to do this now uh, to demonstrate two things. Uh, first of all, we perform uh, impedance measurement in time. Uh, what's let's say uh, rather uh, untypical for let's say for classical devices as a first thing and second thing um, is um, combination between uh, uh, electrochemical uh, effect and the optical effect and uh, like I say uh, in some cases the difference between let's say imprinted water and not imprinted water is extremely low and uh, for this case, you have to amplify basically all this phenomena. And um, at least uh, the first step in this uh, combination optical electrical phenomena, uh, we can use it for amplification. What I uh, will do this now, I will try to switch uh, uh, this thing to my laptop. We can we can do this. Uh, let's first make a small measurement, and then we can a little bit uh, speak about the technology itself. Well, um, here you see uh, in uh, there's uh, three running uh, client. Um, this one from Fighter Sensor. I uh, already saw some let's say things we need uh, probably to analyze data. This. Um, impedance data, at least what I saw that after imprint, uh, after this non-local stuff, um, uh, we receive a kind of increased noise on, on one of the plants. It's uh, okay, so <laughs> we <laughs> something can theoretically be, we leave it running. Uh, this uh, impedance, uh, tissue impedance from a plant, and uh, here we have additionally from a fighter sensor uh, biopotential Um, uh, here is a direct bi biopotential. Uh, you see here again, we, we see kind of increased uh, noise. It's an interesting phenomena. Well, it's a, we, we have only one channel. Normally we have two channels at differential as well. We were measuring one channel uh, biopotential here. Uh, one electrode is installed here in the lowest area of a plant and uh, another electrode here in the upper area of the plant. So that, that you have a kind of large potential, the potential usually about uh, 30, 40 uh, millivolt thing. So, and uh, here is the uh, impedance and impedance, I think uh, there was uh, 13 kilo ohm. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, let's, let, let, let's check it. Um, yes, it's about 12, okay. Um, uh, well, it's it's still running. It's uh, c continuously running. Um, um, what I will do now, um, um, I use this uh, this device, and first uh, I put. Uh, I mean, again, uh, from 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 a methodology, because the most difficult is the methodology. It's a kind of. Uh, well, all these phenomena. I mean, you you have to more or less to have a kind of mental model of what is happening. Though, and uh, most difficult, at least for what we experience with many people talking and, and helping, and I mean, we we, we making a support uh, to to give some idea how to create experiments. So that you you, you know, we just teach people, okay, we will try to express some hypotheses what are we measuring, and then try to collect evidences for this. And the most simple things, okay, is this technology working or not working? I mean, it's a kind of simplest things at all. And then from this point, you can start your argumentation. Well, um, um, this is um, uh, pure water. So what I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I will uh, fill uh, both containers with uh, pure water. So it is not imprinted and, and so on and so on.
done. Um, uh, just a comment, um, the whole electrochemistry is sensitive, it's not super sensitive to, to temperature, but it's sensitive to temperature. And also it's sensitive to, for instance, when I touch it with my hands, then, uh, I mean, it's well visible basically in the measurement. So mm, just, I mean, handling it required a little bit, let's say, understanding that during measurement you can basically change your, 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 your samples. Okay, uh, then here I, uh, let's say, this is a fighter sensor, close it, down, down, down. Okay, uh, I connected to, to this device now. And uh, what I will do, we will perform a measurement in time at a fixed frequency of uh, 450 hertz. So it's basically a device is uh, sampling, 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 sampling. And um, I mean, you will see. I, I put it here that you, you, you basically see what, what is happening there. Okay, here you see these two curves. This is a uh, channel one, uh, red one is a red one, uh, black one is a black one. Well, uh, and now I would like, let's say, to uh, excite fluids and to see a dynamical uh, response uh, from a fluid. So uh, for this, uh, we implemented this excitation mode. It has uh, high frequency and low frequency. You can understand as a modula modulation with two frequencies. So as a first modulation is about um, up to 12 megahertz. I think it's now 1.1 megahertz. And uh, low frequency modulation is about 0 0.5 hertz. So and now it starts this excitation. We will see this uh, basically as a change of dynamics. So this uh, impedance dynamics. And uh, what we will do now, we switch to, uh, like I show in, in my talk, we switch to statistics. And now the system is calculating kinds of statistics. Okay. What, uh, what, what are parameters of, of the noise, what, what we have? No, it's uh, basically, I mean, uh, it's not really, we don't need uh, to run it a long time. Um, well. So it's basically three, it's two, three minutes, it's enough, at least for, for this demo exper experiments. Okay, well, um, where is my client? I think this enough. We see about, I don't know, 20% roughly, yeah? And we, we can, of course, uh, uh, put more uh, characterization. We can, for instance, go in more details. Uh, what are, for instance, what are specific peaks? We can explore dynamical aspects. We can change frequency. We can, uh, you see now, we have multiple uh, parameters. We go through the scanning frequency of impedance spectroscopy and uh, go through spectra. We excite now with blue light with uh, 470 nanometers and uh, with a frequency. So we have 1.1 uh, megahertz and uh, uh, 0.5 hertz excitation. Okay. Well, now we stop it. And um, what I will do, we stop the excitation. Um, uh, what I will do, I will now just uh, replace one of the channels, just from this double differential approach. So we're measuring control to control, and now we're measuring control to ex experimental. So we, in this case, we, we perform a kind of uh, relative measurements. moment is uh, channel two is unfitted is a control and channel one now I change as well I replace by fitted water 
um, by chemically, let, let, let's say, postpone this question after this. I mean, let's uh, um, see what. Yes, there was about, I mean, 20% uh, difference, yeah? Okay, what I do now, I start new file, new measurement, and uh, first I start uh, the same measurement again. This is more or less what we had uh, in the impedance scope. And now I start the same excitation with the same parameters. And I switch to uh, statistics. So, and we immediately see more or less uh, a response, dynamical ionic response of fluid. It's uh, almost uh, 10 times uh, different. So, it's uh, the whole measurement took about, I don't know, two minutes. Yeah. Of course, it should be performed with more controlled condition, light, temperature, and so on and so on. And I think it's uh, basically it's it's enough. So um, the major po point here that what we uh, can demonstrate as a first, okay, we switch off excitation, we switch off measurement. Okay. Uh, the main point what m as mostly people ask, okay, is the difference between my a chemically equal fluid is because uh, fluids is uh, chemically equal. I mean, this is the point. Here, of, of course, we have some issue with temperature because temperature is probably not absolutely the same. But uh, temperature, like I said, is head impact, but at least not so huge. It's really not really dramatic impact. Well, okay, now the question to the technology. Um, Frederick, uh, could you say something this about this technology? Little bit, I mean. Hi. Um, I'm the provider of the um, informed water. And uh, in fact, I'm a practitioner for the last 20 years. And for the last three, four years, I've got a biotech. And uh, where we've been trying to bridge the gap between the domain of coherence and biology. And very simply, we created a range of products. Um, which has got, yeah, which are in form um, water, which have got very particular actions in biology, to um, and we have different proofs on um, inhibiting Borrelia, H. pylori, Campylobacter bacteria, um, and uh, um, some proofs on on, um, on uh, physiology on replication of cells, on inflammation, on decreasing inflammation. So we've got lots of different um, products with different actions to uh, um, work on the biology. And the, uh, the way we inform the water, obviously, is a bit of a trade secret. Um, but um, it's um, the domain that the gentleman is going to talk about tomorrow, um, which is all about frequencies and um, digital um, Informations, um, exactly as well. Okay, um, thank you. <laughs> well, um, this more or less uh, cases what we quite frequently have uh, some let's say practical request, uh, concrete technology, and uh, well uh, more or less uh, some some clear result what what we see finally. Okay, um, any question to this part? Because here you see it's a little bit different usage. Uh, when when in the first case we just uh, run more or less in the classical way uh, by using frequency analysis. In this case we consider the whole system as a non-stationary system, and uh, say well impedance changing at time. Impedance uh, is uh, let's say respond with dynamic response. What we're measuring, uh, we can measure with statistical methods. And okay. Yes, yes. Uh, and this is the difference between the two. Do you mean that it's one, one frequency action and another frequency action? No, no. Uh, both, uh, bo 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 
both, yes, uh, both. Um, it's important. Um, the reason why we basically do this differentially because both uh, containers are at the same light, at the same condition. I'm, I mean, here uh, impact both in the same way. So. Excitation itself is the same. Of course, it should be the same. So, what what does mean with uh, this uh, double, uh, let's say, two different frequencies? You can uh, see kind of let's say high frequency modulation. So we excite it with uh, let's say 12 megahertz or 10 megahertz, and then we switch off, switch on this modulation with a sub frequency, low frequency, sub frequency, something like 0 0.5 hertz. So it's a kind of double uh, meander modulation. Um, this is more or less experience from our generators. We use uh, generators and they work exactly in the same way. And then we say, well, it could be a good idea to use them for, l l like I said, the, the whole story now, and that was, that was my question to, uh, um, I mean, to uh, near infrared spectroscopy. I mean, a combination between electric chemistry and optical phenomena are not fully understood. And what, what we are starting now, we're starting to explore this. I mean, more let's say practical way, but we, we have now devices and we, we, we can explore this. Okay. You, what, you say you used information that you imprinted right now. You, you used it to imprint like IC medical. So is that what we're talking about? Something like that? or just frequencies, but they, the frequency, let's say, is for bacteria X, and then you use another frequency for bacteria Y, uh, or you used exactly the same frequency right now in this experiment. Different frequencies, and you can determine the difference with your system. Just trying to clarify it in two words. Yeah. Well. Uh, at least from 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 our side, we try to be decoupled uh, from let's say imprinting side. We basically we say we don't know. It's a black box for us. It's a more or less you know it's a kind of control as a test for us uh, to receive, for instance, equally imprinted or not equally. I mean, we, we are testing in this this way ourselves. So we, we we don't know what what's happening is fluid, and basically we are not interested in this. For us, is to see whether there is a difference between control fluid and experimental fluid, and that is all, all what what we say. That's the first point. The second point is to characterize. For instance, the, the simplest what we think now, we, we perform already some experiments, to, to define, uh, let's say, five, six, six groups of impact, or this experimental, let's say, technologies, where we can classify, okay, these things like group one, or group two, or group three, and put a little bit more. It's more or less what, um, with near infrared spectroscopy, uh, but uh, let's say more from the viewpoint of uh, dynamical ionic response. So that we, we know, okay, there's a reason for this, we, we know classes of this impact, and can, let's say, provide more information. Okay. Well, I, I saw that you speak a frequency of uh, 550 hertz, and the second one, which I didn't catch because you are too, s too quick, 1.1 megahertz, but I, don't don't really understand what uh, how do you use the the, bo the two frequencies. a practical question because uh, I work with uh, devices, one is time waiver devices from Germany, uh, which are able to, as a practitioner, but I inform water as well. On the one side, uh, like information on the quantum level, and on the other side, I work with the second device with frequencies, and I can also uh, mm, treat water with frequencies. And now you said, I, if I understood you well, that you treated the water, the second parts of the water with frequencies. And it, not, not uh, okay, m make, yeah, I, I, mm, I name it uh, not properly in English, but uh, you, you put frequencies uh, to water, but the other 
a part of the water, the second one, you said it was imprinted water. And what do you understand s by saying imprinted water? Imprinted by information? And uh, if yes, imprinted, but which information and how you imprinted the water? Okay, <laughs> because we can inform water on many ways. We can do it with crystal, with words, with is exactly. Okay, so we, this part you want to keep for yourself. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay. It seems to me that we should compare this his water before imprinting and his water after imprinting. And you, yes, very same water. But now you compare different water. Uh, well, not, 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 not. We, uh, we, we, we took uh, one time contrail to contrail as a, as a kind of a baseline measurement. And then the second time we took a contrail and experimental. Uh, yes, this is, in this case, in, in this case, in this case, I mean, what we received, there was a closed, uh, closed uh, vessels. I mean, this one liter thing. And uh, I assume they are, I mean, not chemically treated. Uh, it's <laughs> It's b basic assumption. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> look, I'm dull enough. What I don't understand. You see, uh, you have put the photo in the contrail and put some imprint. Yeah. From the two yeah. places. Yeah. 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 Same water. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you say this is water, you say it's pure water, you imprint it. And there's no problem, you know, it's not destroyed, it's not broken. Yes. Now No, no, it's, uh, he, he, he gave me uh, control water, we asked, ah. yes, we, we, we asked, that so that that was what, what, what we received. Yeah. yeah. So one person is the imprinted. Yes, 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 yes. And, 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 and they, they use, no they use, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of, of course, of course, there's a meaning, yes, 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 yes. yes. Right. Okay. Otherwise, I mean, uh, er, everybody use different water, and we, uh, we ask it, more or less, it makes sense, I mean, to use the same control water that was used before imprinting, yeah. and then after, yeah. of course, yes, there's a reason, yeah, yeah. Actually, it was uh, imprinted uh, in a double way because uh, you could, uh, why, or I ask you in a different way, why didn't you t take uh, first uh, normal water without any frequencies at all? N n you and you measure it before. Then you took the control water with frequencies. Then you took, uh, the imprinted water, and then you took first, first time the imprinted water with frequencies, because it was imprinted and with frequencies. But I can explain the imprinted and the imprinted. Because I, it, it's a double influence. Information imprinting uh, influence water, and frequencies in are influencing water as well. Okay, thank you. Good, okay, uh, uh, short uh, question, short answer. Because I have some difficulty in understanding the mechanism of measurement, because if we understand what you are measuring, then we can agree much better. Uh, you are using the frequency and then fr uh, ty the derivative of frequency gives the uh, impedance. That's what you are doing. But if you are going to mix two frequencies, high frequency and then stop, and the high frequency and stop, then you're going to have a mathematical problem in measuring the impedance, or you are measuring the impedance of the high frequency, and they y you take break when, when you are giving the... the uh, uh, so you're not taking the impedance of the 0 0.5 hertz. That's nothing to do with the impedance. Yeah, so you are just taking break and then you are using the high frequency in measuring the impedance. Yes, of the world, what we are greatly confused is uh, he's using the frequency because the, the, the derivative frequency gives uh, the impedance just uh, mathematically. That's what he's measuring, not, not for treating. Uh, we can, uh, like I propose, uh, again, uh, um, 
what we we doing here, for instance, we we measuring here measuring impedance at specific electrical frequency, for instance, like here. We measuring we we exciting this fluid now with 450 hertz, and at this frequency we measuring impedance. Yeah, impedance. Yes, and we measuring this in non-stationary way, so impedance changing with time. Okay. And then additionally, we excite fluid with light. And that has, of course, nothing to do with impedance, it's just light excitation. But light interact with uh, on ionic level, let's say, with impedance, and we receive a kind of ionic response. And we express this ionic response with statistics. Uh, that was in my, my, my lecture in the first day. Um, but uh, again, um, I mean, we, we, we can sit down uh, again, and let's say old question just, I mean, can repeat it again. Okay. Uh, should we go to the next step? Experimental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still the same water. I mean, it's still the same water chemically. Yeah, yeah. Chemically, chemically, the same water, yes. That, that is a yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Well, um, now, um, the uh, last point, let's say, last uh, experiment, what we, we prepared, it's open ended. Um, uh, we, we, we started this measurement. Uh, I mean, uh, with this uh, spectrometer, with two channel, there's a channel two. And uh, we measuring here again at a frequency of 450 hertz. Um, and uh, we measuring two channel. There's, for instance, uh, channel one, this red one, this channel one, this is a channel two. So now we uh, consider only channel two. This only channel two. And um, we can, uh, let's say, uh, apply regression analysis. For instance, uh, here we start, uh, what time is now, uh, 58. 58, and we, let's, uh, um, what is the time of our meditation? Uh, blah, blah. It's uh, something like, uh, what do you think? 10 minutes, 20 minutes, we will uh, focus our attention on this. Uh, what how, how long should we do this? Ten, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Jeremy, how long did you done it? Oh, 10 minutes, well, great. Hmm? Okay. Okay, now look, what, what we do now, and that what, what you see now is a regression analysis of impedance. Regression analysis of impedance. And uh, this uh, demonstrate uh, in life, I mean, in, in real time, calculate. And you see resolution now, we, we have a little bit noise. I, I remove all this software filter. I mean, this now, because I would like to uh, proceed it after this with statistical analysis, so it's a lot of noise, it's okay. And you see this, um, uh, resolution here we have something like uh, let's say 200 ohm. It's a basic uh, imp uh, impedance about 200 kilo ohm. So we, we have a kind kind of a, a lot of resolution here. And uh, well, and here uh, this uh, time is running. Uh, this what 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 we see now as let's say the last measurement here at this point. And let's now just I mean. We'll see what will happen. Um, it's a kind of scientific experiment, open-ended scientific experiment, where we can replicate the <laughs> result. Okay, uh, just um, I propose uh, let's uh, uh, attract our attention and this, uh, let's say, uh, this tube here, and uh, wish um, or, or think or meditate or wish that the impedance changing. I mean, there are different different ways how you can do this. Yeah just in uh, with uh, 10 minutes, you know? And then we will see whether it works in collective way. And you can take a look, of course, on, on the cars. Well, <laughs> just a little bit give a feedback. Just uh, attract your attention on this point, though, though this, uh, this impedance in this water here. 
no, this, this one, this one, only this one, yeah, only this one. And this on the screen now. Let's let, let, let's try. Let's try. <laughs> it's it's really it, it is really open ended. I, I I don't know what will happen. Let's let's try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no no. Yeah let's. Yeah. For 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 ten minutes. No, I I didn't prepare music. <laughs>
question. Yeah, thank you. Um, a few comments. So you see here um, uh, basic line. So we started uh, around here with this peak. Hmm? Ah, here, yes, yes, it's exactly at this peak. Yes, and um, and then uh, it's uh, more or less. And we stopped by let's say 10, 12. Okay, um, two comments. Um, first of all. Um, you see that uh, this imprinting can take time. It's not uh, just, I mean, drop down, drawn up. Um, uh, what is our, let's say, uh, decision to see whether what's successful or not? Uh, this more or less baseline uh, through uh, uh, regression analysis. And we uh, leave water a little bit time now to extend these dynamics. And we will see whether it, let's say, go uh, enough, also more than uh, three sigma or five sigma and it's a significant when it's, let's say, uh, didn't, uh, let's say, goes to through this three sigma deviation from baseline, then it was not successful. Okay, but, hmm? no, I don't know. That's no, no, now what, what we've done is more or less the same way as, uh, as imprinting, but we are imprinted the water with our consciousness. And what we observe here, we observe a res uh, response of ionic dynamic. We change what we call internally coefficients in ionic dynamics. And this coefficient, they change like a uh, change of inclination, more or less uh, of inclination of this. And uh, to in order to see, because you see, uh, see here, there's a kind of variation. And in order to, 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 to get it visible, I mean, we, we need time to see what is the trend, what's the general trend. We will see. I mean, let's uh, let, let's give a little bit more time, and then we will see. Uh, just to, to say, you um, uh, in Stuttgart in our laboratory, uh, we have uh, two running uh, systems exactly for this purposes. I show it to you. Is we, we have multiple devices running online. And here is the impedance spectroscope. And for instance, here. And they plot continuously in internet, also in real time. And here are data. Uh, this uh, is the channel one. This is channel 10. And you see there's a real time. The, the in Stuttgart, uh, 15, 12. Uh, and there's uh, channel one, channel two, temperature. Uh, room temperature, temperature of fluid in inside of fluids. Um, I mean, this uh, what is this? Uh, this is phase, uh, magnetic field trends, um, I mean acceleration, and uh, uh, we have uh, two two uh, these devices exactly for this purpose. So there is a kind of uh, key that uh, I mean people can concentrate and they can use it for this kind, let's say this or another kind of this non-local uh, tests. Okay, this was from my side. Yeah. Second channel. Let's see. But uh, y y you know, when you perform this kind of experiments, you see that uh, this, let's say this uh, mental impact is not easy. I mean, you have really to to train. And um, I mean specific uh, group dynamics, and then uh, when you hear then then people we can do this immediately, quickly, and you know there's a lot of, of stories. That's basically it's not really true. I mean in this case you can easily I mean uh, check that it's uh, quite quite tough. Okay, let's uh, check what is doing to channel two. Ah, by the way. Is everybody concentrated on channel one? <laughs> this is channel one. <laughs> ah, you are strong, Igor. You are extremely strong. <laughs> but in this case, you can see more or less in differential mode uh, between channels. 
sometimes it uh, makes sense, I mean, to look uh, as a differential channel. So we see now differential channel. And this more or less what was a differential channel. Hmm, okay. Thank you, thank you for this comment, by the way. Yes, this um, there, let's say, absolute value, and this is uh, uh, li like this. This red one is red one, and uh, another one is another one. Um, red one is, uh, this is red label, this closer to me, this uh, red label. I mean, the differential, I mean, um, Differential channel uh, make more sense because uh, there was uh, equal light condition, equal temperature changes, and both, no, okay. But nice, nice. Mm. <laughs> um, I wonder if uh, does have any meaning to you that, for instance, our cell phones are on because uh, by these in, in experiments like that, uh, Global Consciousness Project, or, or, or okay, uh, yeah, it's better actually when we switch off. Okay. But, um, again, this is uh, more or less point of differential measurement when, uh, of course, cell phones and so on and so on, and then uh, you see this background region, there was the same condition, background region first, and the second, I mean, uh, you apply more or less uh, the same condition for two channels. I mean, it's, uh, I mean okay, wha whatever it means. I mean, no, no comment at this point, there was open-ended stuff. <laughs> well, now um, we have multiple devices here. I would like to, to leave it running a little bit and fit a sensor running because I would like to analyze this non-local experiment as uh, statistical data. So we have about uh, three, probably four uh, sets who is interested to, to make some experiments, as a to repeat, first of all, experiment with water, just to understand with excitation and water. Okay, this, this can be done, uh, can be done here, we can repeat it here. Okay, who is else is interested? So we, we need to, let's say, to download soft, and to install and to run it. Locally, of course, on local laptop, Windows uh, laptop. I can give you a spectrometer and you can, for instance, perform this or that experiment when you have some technology what you like to prove or, I mean, do something, uh, some interesting uh, results. Yeah, here, here, sure. Ah, okay, well, okay, two. Uh, let's check how many, okay. I have one device for me, one is running. Um, Okay, and I have one additional, then, okay, then second cluster, let, let's say one cluster is here and second cluster is there, okay. And we, we perform again excitation spectroscopy with the samples of what we had. I mean, ju just to answer all this question, we will do this slowly and I mean repeat at each step, yeah. Okay, and then you, you, you already have uh, soft installed, yeah. Yeah, okay, then, uh, then that's for you. Okay, that was at least prepared part, now it's a chaotical part, <laughs> thank you. Sorry, we, we have one additional uh, presentation. We was missed you. Uh, w w would you like to do this? Yeah, sure. When, when it's planned, yes, yeah, sure. W are you prepared? Yeah? Uh, yeah, sure. Please. I don't know. 
guys there. When, when you can set up it, I mean, uh, I, I have nothing to do this with laptops. When you can set up it, I mean, please give a presentation. Yeah, yeah, because please. I don't have it. So maybe some uh, of you remember me like your cultural guy, uh, guide and assistant two years ago when the conference were organized in the governmental uh, residence uh, Boyana. Uh, this time I'm here to inform you that uh, my contact with uh, all of you that I name your excellencies, global researchers of the uh, science of water, thank you very much to touch us with your high dreams and to coach us to dream high like you. And we start and draft one project to build a center for excellence in creative and uh, recreative industries. It's mean the, to bridge the IT technologies with the influence of water for the health of people, the recreation and the niche tourism mean to have uh, rebuilding your energy, to have your creativity again, because you know all the IT technologies sometimes are keep out our energy and we are not in top form. So uh, we win a European project funded by both uh, European funds, the social fund and the uh, research and development fund for 30 million and we are 12 uh, partners inside with uh, the uh, assistant partners like the municipality of Sofia and the genomic center of Bulgaria and uh, we will try to build this uh, first in Europe center of excellence in creative industry. Uh, we put the title of our, level, uh, uh, our uh, scientific uh, center, uh, center on uh, social innovations, uh, recreative human design, and niche tourism. Why niche tourism? Because it's a small part of the to global tourism, which need, for example, for spa, you need mineral water. For Talasso, you need the mud, you need the sand, you need the algae, you need the uh, salty sea water to have the influence in the human body to rebuild your energy and your well-being. And uh, why we say that we will work uh, in the field of uh, the uh, recreative human design, it means to make research for different, for example, uh, recreative uh, physical activities inside of water, like the aqua aerobic, like the aqua fitness, aqua jogging, aqua uh, cycling inside of the water and to see how we can uh, study the influence for different disease but not so much in the site of disease. We are working in the health prevention for healthy people, how to be more active, how to be more motivated, how to feel yourself good. So you are welcome uh, to uh, connect our professional network. This center will be born after because it's an authentic uh, restoration of one architectural uh, building uh, with mineral life, mineral water inside. The name is of Jakupel. So we will ground a global network for those people that are interested to make exchange online. We will create a data hub for the first time for the recreative industry. 
because in wellness and spa industry, uh, there is no so much science inside. So we want to, um, for example, create uh, and make patent for new stone sets with new rocks in favor and support of the human health. So thank you very much. It was my pleasure and we will connect you through internet, those of you who are uh, and I forget to say that uh, the very important uh, uh, activity in this center of excellence is the transfer of the uh, aquaphotomic because you know the founder is the Bulgarian professor Rumiana Tsenkova and we will equip a special area in this center of excellence to can uh, validate and study the reaction of the different influences coming from the different natural products in support of the human body. And we will study th these effects through aquaphotomic, through uh, brain moni monitoring, through emotional dynamic. The emotional dynamic will permit us to make exactly for the customer, so personal, uh, personalization of the influence of the therapy of the program. Because some people, uh, for example, imagine one uh, manual therapy and uh, you don't feel well when the therapist is coming outside or at the top of your leg and here the emotional dynamic will give us the information and we can put out this skill or technique and uh, to do everything for your good feeling and uh, uh, rebuilding your energy. With VR, different uh, pictures and uh, we will create uh, a smart uh, applications to put in, combining with musical therapies and uh, try to build and make patent for new product services in the area of niche tourism and for everybody. Our concept is that wellness is a human right for all, is not only for rich people. Wellness is to feel good and to do good to people and all around you. And we feel us like an international water bridge that will collect with the life, the energy of the life in mineral waters that they don't have borders. They are under the land and they connect all of you, uh, of us together like a, a big family. So you are welcome and I dream highly that the next conference, when you come back here again, our center will be ready and you will receive the gift, of the gift for three days free, uh, different procedures and influences and programs in this center. Thank you very much. Thank you to come in Bulgaria. Thank you to all organizers. And here, uh, the men that love Bulgaria and they so inspiring. Darago Evgeny, German of Balshoi Paklon. <laughs> we love you. You are really a great person. Uh, it's incredible the energy and the positivity that you have. Believe me, I will try to introduce the IC copy for the first time in the world in the wellness and spa industry. Thank you, love you. Great, thank you very much.